December 1883. The cold of winter has invaded this marshy plain of Holland. At the end of the road lies Noonan, a small village composed of a handful of humble dwellings. A man knocks on the door of his father's vicarage. Vincent van Gogh, son of Theodorus van Gogh, the village pastor, turns away. He was a good evangelist, but a bad preacher. The violence of his faith terrified the congregation. It was in an effort to find another means of expressing his love for his fellow man that van Gogh, the artist, was born. Native land served as a picture book. He wants his paintings to show the misery of the peasants. Nature and life become the object of his intense passion. But he soon tires of painting this bleak, silent land. Other horizons beckon him. Leaving Noonan one November evening, Van Gogh sets out in search of his destiny. Like so many others, he turns toward Paris, a city of hope and promise, where his deep curiosity finds new modes of expression. Small apartment in Old Montmartre. A new palette. Fresh colors. And a new literature. In the streets and cafes of Montmartre, he meets other painters, Lautrec, Seurat, Gauguin, who, like himself, are searching for a new form of art. But in his moments of solitude, he feels himself overburdened with the selfishness of the big city. 
He dreams of a more profound happiness and of other lands. Japanese prints that he has seen in the shops constantly haunt him. Just as he left the marshy plains of Holland, he now turns away from the cold gray skies of Paris and heads for the south. This is no longer a dream, and these are not Japanese prints. The warm sun and bright flowers of Provence bring his search to an end. In the countryside, along the roads of Arles, Van Gogh's enthusiasm reaches new heights. Vibrant colors merge with the people and objects around him to create a state of confusion in his troubled mind. returns to his solitary room, overcome by fever. Occasionally a friend or neighbor comes to pose for him. He continues to work in this state of delusion with no regard for his weakened condition. One day Van Gogh suddenly feels his senses collapse. The situation comes to a climax one Christmas Eve. In an outburst of madness, he severed one of his ears. The asylum of saint Rémy closes in on him. walled-in garden. Unnatural silence.
distressing tranquility. A state of being dominated by foreboding. Paint, paint everything, even if the subject is only hospital rooms. A prisoner within, as well as without, he continues to paint unrelentlessly. The doctors decide that Van Gogh's condition has improved. The doors of the asylum are thrown open. He is free. Nature again comes to his attention. Paint, paint the song of life, but everything revolves so fast. How can it be grasped? One cannot play carelessly with fire without suffering the consequences. And so Van Gogh, at the peak of his art, falters and comes to a standstill. His strength rapidly waning, he seeks refuge in a small town near Paris. The peaceful thatched roofs of Auvers recall his native village but his entire being is slowly devoured by a burning desire. Finally, to be able to abandon himself to the peace of mind he had always desired, to give up everything with the exception of his painting. He had accomplished only six years of diligent work, Van Gogh rebels. Everything within him cries out. He must come to a decision.
On the 27th of July, 1890, while he was still too young to know his glory, but nevertheless convinced of it, he made that necessary but fatal decision. Standing in front of his easel in the middle of a field, Van Gogh put a bullet through his heart, thus bringing his tormented life to an end. 